Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Well today we're going to show you how to create a global header. Divi comes as standard with a regular header up here which is okay but you can really go to town if you want to and make it your own. I've got another example here. As you can see I've got a little countdown timer for a sale and a simple menu here. This is a sort of simplified version but you can do pretty much anything you want. So let's get started, I'll show you how to do it. First thing we need to do is go down to our dashboard. And we're going to go down to Divi and Theme Builder. Now we built a global footer the other day. Here's a global header I've just built. I'm going to trash that and we'll start again. When you first get here, if you've not built one, you click on Add Global Header here. And as it says global, it's going to appear on all pages. So let's go ahead and hit build global header and it's just like any other Divi Builder page you start with a blank page here and you can start adding what you want so let's just add a row I'm going to use perhaps something like this with the menu on the left and a button on the right perhaps but let's use this one I'm going to add Divi's menu module right here now what you want to do is select the menu that you want and these have to be saved as menus. Have a look at our menus video, creating a menu video if you don't know how to do that. Top menu is fine for me. You can add your company logo. Just select it from your library. Now I'll give this a dark background today. So let's perhaps have a light logo. And it's popped it there and this is huge that's the actual size of that image if you've got a small one it'll appear smaller but let's adjust it so it's the right size for us and we'll put a background in so you can see things a bit better so let's go with design let's go down to sizing you've got logo width here drag it to the sort of size that you want i think something like that's going to work for me i'll put a background in now so you can see it so i'm going to go up into my section blue tab for a section, green tab for a row, dark tab for a module. Let's just give this in the background. I'll give it a gradient. We've got color, gradient, image or video. And hit the little add background gradient button there. Let's put their regular blue in there and let's put black down the bottom. There we go. That's fine for me. As you can see, we've got a background color in our little menu module there. Let's save this go back into our little menu module go down to background I'm going to trash that background color so there's our logo it's standing out great can't really read the menu there so let's pop back in to design here's our menu text let's make it the color that we want it so I'm going to leave the active link color white and also make the text white there we are and like with anything else text wise with Divi you can select a font if you want to. It's got all kinds of different crazy fonts here. Just hover over one and it'll give you an example. I'm going to stick with the default. You can make it regular, bold, semi-bold, depending on which font you use. You might semi-bold, I think. You might capitalize it, make it a little bit bigger. That works fine for me. You can fine tune with the little arrows here, or you can just type in the value you want right there. Okay, I do want that kind of in the middle. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. And here we've got text alignment. So I'm going to pop mine in the middle. Fantastic. Okay, like I say, I'm keeping mine fairly simple for this demonstration today. But you can put in whatever you want. You can make this row full width if you want to. And have it spread out the size of the screen. Let's add a little button over here, perhaps. So again, I'm going to hit the little, I'm going to hit the little dark button for a module. I'm going to pop in a button. That actually doesn't look too bad, but I think I'll make it my own. And let's make it a call now button. And for a live call button, we covered that in another video as well. For the link, you use tel, T-E-L, colon, put in your country code, and then the number. There we go. And let's customize this button a bit, make it our own. I'm going over to design, going down to button, I'm going to flip the switch to on. And let's make the text color white. Let's make the background purple. Perhaps on hover, let's make it a different color. And to do that, 
common to most DV modules, if you ho hover over the dark text there, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little arrow, you've got a desktop state when your mouse is not on it, and a hover state when your mouse is on it. So when the mouse is on it, let's perhaps make it red. Okay, and there's a white border around there at the moment. I really don't want that on there. So I'm going to take the border away. Great, let's flip it back to desktop and it should go purple. Fantastic. Okay, you can add other elements on top or below. Let's add another little row here. And I'll use single column. Let's add perhaps a countdown timer to a sale. A little big there. Put in whatever title you want up there. And let's say make it for seven days or so. And you can adjust the time here from zero, zero hour up to 23 hours. Let's make it 9 a.m. or 8 a.m., something like that. And you've got your minutes down here, zero to 59. So I'm going to make mine 8 a.m. for seven days. OK, that text and everything is a little bit big. So let's go into design. We've got our title text. You can either go down there or hit the little blue circle with a white brush on it to get straight to it. The color's OK. I want to take it down a little bit in size. And let's make it also semi-bold. And we'll capitalize it also. There we go. OK. And our numbers text, again, it's too big. So let's take that down in size, whatever size you want it. There we go. And if we roll down, we can take the line height down a bit to squish it all together a little bit. So let's take this down and you'll see it sort of all come together a little bit there. I really don't want hardly any padding top and bottom. Padding is the space around it here. So let's go to our design tab again. Close out the numbers text. Let's go down to spacing. Let's try putting five picks top. I'm just putting the five in and the similar on the bottom. Just hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. OK, that's not too bad, but I want it to stretch full width and I want it to be on top of our menu up here. So let's get rid of that background that we've got there. Again, content, background, there's that color. Hit the trash can to get rid of it. Let's put my own color in. I think I'll put the color in the row itself. Because I'm going to make that row full width. So I'm going to go into the green one for the row. Give it a background color of perhaps black or a dark gray. I think black, black's going to be okay because I'm going to put it at the top. And I want to make it full width, so let's go over to design. We'll go down to sizing, drag the width up to 100%, and you can copy that, control C, paste it in the max width below, control V, or you can just type it in if you prefer. As you can see, we've got a full width row. But again, I've got too much padding going on there. And let's just move this up to where we want it. So I'm going to grab it by the little handle. I'm going to put it on top of the other row here. So we've now got this on the top. Reason we've got a gap top and bottom is because there's a bit of padding on our section here. So let's take that padding away from the section, blue tab of the section, over to design, spacing. Let's put a zero top and bottom. So I'm just going to put the zero in and hit the chain. There we go. And we can tighten up that row a little bit more if we want to by taking away some of the padding, either by selecting it and dragging with an arrow, or we can go back into that row, green tab again, design and spacing. Let's put a zero in. That's not too bad. Let's perhaps put a little bit more on the top and bottom there. So three pixel. And remember, because I've got the chain linked, it's doing both. Yeah, that's fine. That button looks like it needs to come down a little bit there. So let's pop in there and let's pop that button also in the middle so that when it goes down to mobile version, it'll be in the middle. Of course, if you watch my videos on different things on different devices, you'll know how to do that on different devices also. So let's go to design on the button, go to spacing. This time we'll use a bit of margin to push it down. If I use padding with the button, it'll actually make it fatter. For instance, if I put 10 pixels padding on the top, you'll see it just adds it to above the writing there. 
So I don't really want to do that. I want to use margin. You can just increment up with the little arrows till it's in the place that you want it. Something like that. That works for me. And you can go on and on adding little things if you want to, but that's going to work for my demonstration today. So let's save the changes here. We'll go down to the bottom, make sure and save the page changes. Let's exit out. Make sure everything's saved on our builder page here. Go back to the regular site. If I refresh, there's our original. And there's our global header right there. Now at the moment, as we're rolling down, there's my crazy demos I got for my uh, scroll effects and what have you. It's disappearing at the top, which is fine, but if you want to make it sticky, it's really easy to do. So let's enable the visual builder. Once you've got a global header, you can actually edit the header on the page. You can't do it with a regular one. And also when you've got a global footer like we made the other day, you can edit it from the page itself. So let's go back into our header up here. I'm going to hit edit header template. And go into the section that we built for it. And what we can do is go over to advanced and if you saw scroll effects and sticky elements you'll know how to do this. We can go down to scroll effects on the bottom of the advanced tab. We can say stick, stick to top. Now if we save this now, exit the visual builder. Actually, before I do that, this little countdown timer, what I meant to do with it also is have a link. So if anybody clicks on it, it'll take them to a certain page. And to do that, either go into the row, you can put a link on the row if you want to, or into the module itself. First tab, you've got a link down here. You can put a link in right there. Just put a hashtag in as a placeholder. Always best practice if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab so that your site stays open. I'm presuming we'll be linking to a real page here on the same site, so I'm going to leave it in the same window. Let's save that. Now let's save our changes. And exit the Visual Builder. And there we are, there's our header. And if I scroll up now, it's sticky, as you can see. It sticks where it is. And if I roll over this, you see it changes to a hand for a link. And of course, we've got our call to action button, and our regular menu items, and our logo here. Like I say, you can go to town and make it your own. This is a very simple version. But that's how to make a global header with the Divi theme. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.